this is getting raw, and I really want to know. Maybe we don't talk about. I want to know your biggest failures. What sure. What have you lost the most amount of money on? What have you just blown money like no tomorrow? What have you failed miserably? Yeah, mate. IT, absolutely. Yeah, IT. I've wasted um, bad choices in providers, bad choices in web developers. You know, just and I've just lost thousands of dollars in that. Mm-hmm. I'd even have to say in advertising as well. You know, when I say probably the more so, not so much client advertising. I mean, most of our business comes from referral anyway. Sure. Yeah. But um, it's more so in franchising advertising. Yeah. You know, most of our, our studio growths come from the our, we call our grow and go program. Mm-hmm. So people come in, we grow them as trainers, yep. and they develop through network and go. But yep. I've wasted so much money on advertising and magazines and for for clients and consumers. No, or no, franchise? for franchises to actually attract franchise owners. Interesting. You know, sort of gone down a path of, you know, probably a big failure is actually trying to sell vision. You know, if, uh, for so many years, like it probably lost companies. Well, sell vision in terms of sell it to someone to buy a franchise. Sure. Yeah. You know, it's not so much, you know, I can't just, you know, I can't, this is what I, who I am and what I do are the same thing, you know, so this is just, you know, it's, the vision's me. Yeah. Trying to sell the, sell the dream for someone to buy a franchise, you know, I find if you have to sell it to somebody, that's wrong, you know, and for, so probably through the GFC period, you know, when we weren't opening studios fast, we just couldn't get money, yep. you know, out of banks and that, then, you know, we're trying to sell it to people. Mm-hmm. And I think that was a mistake, you know, whereas, yeah. you know, where, where the way Vision really grew was that people have always come to me and said, hey, Simo, I want to open a studio. Just naturally? Naturally. It's been organic growth. Well, how many staff do you have the Vision across? How many staff? Oh, mate, 350. So you got 350 potential yeah. owners. Yeah. So, IT, um, advertising. Yeah. Anything else? Mistakes, failures. One more. Um, yeah, one, more. one more. Definitely focus on the, the technical side of PT rather than focus on the business side. So of you PT. focus on that way too much. Oh, way too you? much, mate. Like I, I focused on okay, making sure trainers knew the like, functional anatomy terms, movement terms, mm. muscle analysis, all that sort of stuff. Way too much. You know, you know, rather than actually focus on probably, you know, the emotional side. We we focus heavily now on the emotional side of um, human behaviour. Mm. You know, so um, you know, I was not focusing on that. It was almost like you know, my exercise science degree taught me to be almost like an assassin. Mm. So you want to get results? Well, you, that's right. You know, you, you want to get results? Let's weight train hard. Yep. You know, so as to kill people in exercise, <laughs> rather than actually understand them. You know, yeah, so it's all about time. like a wellness program. Yeah, absolutely. And, and lifestyle program, yeah. not just the, here's the exercise, it's the yeah. whole kit. If people were looking at opening their own studio, right, opening a vision, they look at cost, and they probably try and get it on a budget on their own, and okay, I can save some dollars. Yeah. What, why, why do trainers then make the switch to go, do you think, do you think it's the systems? Do you think it's the success straight away they can have? The time that the five years you yeah. lost money and, and, and work really late, do they, what are they looking for? No, I think it's a combination. I think sometimes what happens with a lot of people don't see that though. Like, um, like some of our, sometimes people can on a franchise and go, oh, how good is this? It's just going to basically run itself. Yeah. You know, whereas like it's in, in any small business, whether it's a franchise of your own, I mean, I speak to franchisors a lot in other industries and they will say that sometimes people forget that this is still a, a small business mm. and you've got to work a small business hard. You know, so I think sometimes the, um, you know, we've probably even gone to the road of saying, okay, you, you can have a business that can operate without you. And sure, it can operate without you, but it takes a lot of development of people to get it to that sort of stage. Yeah. So I think people tend to sort of miss out. They, you know, even when you read books, it says, oh, you know, this, uh, this, this entrepreneur struggled for five years. Yeah. And then they move on to the next point. Mm. Now, hang on, let's, let's just think about that. This guy busted his butt for five years before he actually got there. Yeah. You know, people want to easily dismiss all the hard stuff. And that's what I, that's what's really interesting stuff. because it's yes, we're at the stage now. We're at, you know, I think every trainer's dream. You've got a great team here, a really close knit of of, of your ad, staff team, your head office here. You got downstairs. I go past every highway. There's a vision plastered everywhere. You can't miss a thing. If there's any message out for trainers, it's just the believe in that concept called delay gratification. You know, it's not going to happen straight away. I mean, it's Gen- all Generation Y, it's yeah. like that one now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Generation Y not. <laughs> Last question. Where is vision going in the next sort of five years? What What are we going to see about it? Where's your... Sure. Where's Andrew's vision going to go? Mate, I think uh, a, a lot of it's going to go into the online space. I definitely think that from a marketing perspective, that's where we need to go. I mean, from a client service point of view, like you know, providing all the information for clients, giving them access at home. Um, that's, that's really important because I mean, a client's results really come from what they do when they're not here. You know, so we need to make sure that clients are empowered 
uh, to do this stuff when they're not here. You know, I think um, a lot of it's going to come back to just the education away from just the exercise. I think too many people focus way too much on exercise to be able to get results. Yep. Still, obviously, it's important that people do the regular exercise session. I'm not going to take that away at all. But actually understand what drives people. And I've seen over the years a number of the, my key mentors are now moved into more into coaching, you know, looking at the psychology of human behavior. Mm -hmm. And that's where it's really at, I believe, because it's not, you know, to get clients getting results, not rocket science. You just yep. got to understand why people don't do it. You know, and actually then work out what motivates them to do it. And then so, you think having those methods is going to be the next level absolutely. of the next five years, what we yeah, need. Yeah, definitely. Like it, yeah. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Excellent. You know, I mean, our, our goal is to, to definitely be national. I mean, we want to... Um, you know, You're in uh, Queensland, uh, Brisbane, sorry, Queensland, New South Wales, Victoria, is that correct? That's it, yeah. Okay. But just to establish ourselves more in Victoria, yeah. establish ourselves more in, sure. in Queensland. You know, we had all these, you know, probably one of the biggest mistakes was actually having these green, green... We've got another planes. mistake, we've got another mistake. Yeah, another so. mistake, oh, big one. Uh, listen to other people too much and actually not focus on what they want for you rather than what you want for you. You know, so I had this, um, you know, someone convince me that we should have like go global and all this sort of stuff and have these massive growth plans yep. where at the end of the day it's always been about that slow growth I mean it, it took me you know five and a half years to get to six for a reason because mm -hmm. I wanted to make sure that all these guys got results so really for me it's more about consolidation and ensuring our existing studios are really successful and and really pulling up I've made mistakes of actually probably being a little bit too liberal and free with our guys and rather than go no there's a system here for a reason you know, you've got to make sure that people are following the system because that's what gets results. You know, so that's what it's more about for me you know, in the future, really, it's just consolidation so that we get that grow and go path. Like if, we're not having, if I don't have owners who want to help their trainers grow, then that's not good. Mm. You know, really, it's all about... You've got passionate people. Yeah, absolutely. Passionate people want to help trainers have a long-term career. And if they're in it just for themselves, then that, that to me, is not, not acceptable. Won't work. So, you know, really, it's, it's going back to that core value. Excellent. I literally could be here all day talking to the great man, but um, we're going to have to leave it there. And uh, maybe we'll do a part two or three later down the track. Cool. Thanks, mate. Thanks, mate. Thanks, Cheers. Cheers.